<laughs> Action! Good morning, uh, wine fanatics. Uh, I'm Gabor. And I'm John. And this is the tasting table in Brodyutsa 9 in the heart of Budapest. So, as you can see, it's another manic Monday here. Uh, we are really having a rough Monday morning, but we have to do it. Uh, we're going to taste uh, three sparkling wines today. The Hungarian word for sparkling wine is Pezsgő. And um, well, before we even get into it, if you like what you hear, these wines are available both in the EU, all over the EU, and almost all over the United States of America as well. So um, uh, these sparkling wines were made by Nádas uh, Bormühely, uh, a husband and wife team uh, in the wine region of Ekek. If uh, you have ever been to Hungary uh, and uh, took a short drive west of Budapest, you would arrive uh, or would have arrived in the Ekek region. Ekek is 90% uh, a white wine region. It's a region of about uh, 1600 hectares of, uh, of land. Their main focus for many wine, wineries is the, is the Pezsgő, the, the, the sparkling wine. Sometimes, well, actually most, most of the time now, it's a traditional method, so uh, bottle fermented. And it's also the only region in Hungary that uh, has its own PBO, so like a, a, a protected designation system uh, for sparkling wine. And uh, that was a little bit um, about the region in just a nutshell. And then, John, what do you know about this guy? A few things. Um, Nadosh, is, he's a fantastic host. The best thing about going there is just he has a really, really wide portfolio of wines. Yeah, he and his wife make a fantastic team. Uh, definitely a guy who knows a lot about wine, a lot about what he's doing. Has a master's in winemaking and, and learned a ton about, about you know, his trade all over the world. So he, he did do some harvest and some practice in, in the Yarra Valley in Austria. He was in Canada for a bit. And also, yeah, France, of course, so both old world, new world, um, collected all of those experiences and all that knowledge and brought it back home to Etiak. He and his wife, Veronica, established their winery in, in 2011, about, yeah, a little bit over a decade ago. And now they're just making fantastic wines, really, really interesting sparkling wine portfolio and loads of still wines as well. Um, kind of combining this um, traditional, you know, tried and true practice methods of making amazing wines, but also experimenting a bit and, and mixing it up when they can. Yeah, but this guy has the science down. Like he has his master's, 100%. he worked at Turley for a while. Yeah, it's really one of those, he, he learned the basics. Oh, and then yeah. once you master the basics, then you start breaking the rules. And that's, that's what's going on. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Happy Monday morning. Happy Monday morning. And... This, I, I forgot the spittoon. Oops. <laughs> gotta do it. It's a hard, hard job, you know. So, um, starting off, yeah, the GV sparkling wine. GV, what does it stand for? Good vino, right? <laughs> uh, no, GV, Gruner Veltliner. So, 100% Gruner Veltliner, um, which is a grape we, we usually associate with Austria, but it does really, really well in Etiak. You have that, you know, really limestone rich soil, cool climate, um, which is gonna bring out that mineral characteristic in the wine, but also loads of fruit. It had 50-50 yeah, oak and uh, steel tank aging, so bringing a little bit of structure, but also really highlighting that fruitiness, which is for me, you know, lots of lemon, lots of green apple, very tart, yeah. uh, younger fruit notes. A lot of and lemon, then, a lot of lemon in this one. And then, yeah, one, one year aging in bottle, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> uh, 2021 vintage. So that's the other amazing thing about, about all three of these is that they're, um, they're vintage a vintage sparkling wine rather than blending across different vintages which is kind of standard practice yeah. he's highlighting the, the unique characteristics of, of and conditions of each year i think it's a perfect aperitif oysters uh you know charcuterie this kind of stuff it's a wine that you want to drink at the beginning of the meal 100%. because of its crisp acidity exactly so fresh you know aperitivo drink something on the terrace garden party, picnic, mm -hmm. and any of that stuff. It's <laughs> Okay, me. so we're gonna move on to the next one. Oh boy. Oh boy, clean up on aisle three. Thank you. Yes. Now we're back. We're back. <laughs> and the next, the next uh, Pejgu is uh, 
made from a very unique variety, only grown in Hungary and only since uh, the mid 90s, 1990s. And I looked it up, it was, um, it was created. This is a hybrid variety that was created in 1995 by a Hungarian scientist called Pál Kozma. And there is only 164 hectares of this grape planted. The name of the grape is Pearl of Victoria or Victoria Gyöngye uh, in our language. And um, besides, besides uh, uh, Szilárd Nádas, not too many winemakers uh, uh, make wine from this or even grow it. So this great Pearl of Victoria was created to be a sparkling wine wine. Somehow it never took off, but um, that makes it even more unique. Compared to the previous one, to me this is a little yeastier. Uh, this one is also a traditional method, sparkling wine. What are we getting? A little bit of full, fairly full body for a, for a sparkling wine. And uh, yeah, I get a lot of nice yeast in this. Uh, definitely citruses and maybe a little bit of um, like nutty, almond, definitely. hazelnut, these kind of characters. Uh, a little toast in this. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that we should also mention is that all three of these are Brut Nature. Yeah. So in terms of the, the sugar level, uh, that designation means that it has between zero and three grams of residual sugar, um, which is basically nothing. You know, that in-bottle fermentation, the fruitiness, the natural characteristics of the grape varietal, all of that stuff is, is taking, you know, taking command. And one, one, one thing I can add to the Brut Nature idea is that if you make, if you don't add any dosage at the end, then you have to have the recipe right from the beginning. From the beginning, there's no so hiding. there is no there is no second chance. It's no like playing Mozart. If you make a mistake, everybody knows. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So this is Victoria Gyöngye, Pearl of V, Pearl of Victoria, and uh, I love it. Now we do have a spittoon, but we are not using it. So I feel like with wines like this, it's it's an injustice to use the spittoon. Sparkling wine. Yeah. With sparkling wine and with osu, I find it really hard to use the spittoon. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's five o'clock in Japan by now, isn't it? So, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> nice! Here we go. Moving on to number three. This is a, for me, this is a controversial one. It is. For a few reasons. Not, not that I don't love it. I, I'm, not, I'm not complaining about the quality. I'm not complaining about, how, you know, how wonderful of the wine this is. But, you know, you look at the label. Nice pink label. On the label, it even says like rosé sparkling wine. But the blend here for this Pinot is going to be 98% Pinot Gris and 2% Pinot Noir. I feel like he's playing with us. I feel like he's, he's playing a trick here. He, and I love it. <laughs> no, I think Silad is actually all about playing when it comes to winemaking. He likes to experiment and he also likes to play with the names and I guess play with the customers as well. And people seem to enjoy it when it's about Pejgu. There's this small, small There's tinge of- There's a tiny tinge of pink-ishness pink. to yeah. it. But I mean, for, for, you know, you ask a random person on the street, like what color is this wine? They're gonna say, oh, it's a white sparkling wine. But I think that's, you know, that's fine. That's, the, that's why we love him. And that's why, that's what makes the wine unique. Um, so, I mean, in terms of technical information, we have 2020 vintage, again, Brut Nature. Um, again, 50-50 aging, you know, half of that in oak, half of that in stainless steel to maintain that freshness, but also give some complexity at the same time. Um, and this one really does have like a nuttiness to it. I'm getting mm -hmm. this like, uh, like green walnut or like, like almond skin or something like that, similar to like mm -hmm. these Olas Riesling flavors mm -hmm. on top of just a, a wide range of different fruits, orchard fruits, citrus, a little bit of stone fruit as well. Um, a lot going on, but uh, you know, also very easy to enjoy. And guess how, how many bottles were made? 448 bottles and it's not gonna be there's not gonna be more so no it's not gonna last very long either no. i don't think once uh i love the different colors absolutely lightest little darker yellow and then turning to the pink side right by the way uh a fun fact is that there are six bars of pressure in a in a bottle of sparkling wine which is a, a lot that's that's twice as much as in your in your car tire. That qualifies as a weapon, I feel. Well, you saw in in the, in the right hands and the wrong hands. You know, someone could get hurt. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much.
uh, this is it for today. Do you have anything else that you should drink more Peshku? That's drink all more I can Peshku. Say. Drink more Peshku. Wear protective eyewear if you have to. And uh, no, cheers to that. Cheers, cheers to, to that. Cheers to protective eyewear. And you'll find us at tastehungary.us, tastehungary.eu. You can buy these wines individually. You can join our wine club. Uh, it's up to you uh, how you can uh, connect with us. God bless you guys. Cheers.